Hi guys, how are you doing today? It's Dr. Erica Judge Edwards here, mother of Carl Emery Edwards, founder of Carl Emery's World, and autism advocate. And I'm here today to talk about Easter tips. So the number one thing that you want to do is ensure that your child is comfortable and ensure that they are in an environment that is in alignment with their needs. Now, as you know, I have a two and a half year old daughter who was diagnosed with level three autism at 21 months old. So typically with any activities that we do, we keep her comfort in mind. So a lot of things we do, they will be short, they will be simple, and they will get the job done. We do try to minimize sensory and external stimuli that will not be in her best interest. So when we do Easter, we will typically color eggs with Carl alone, just myself, her dad, and Carl. We get the little Easter coloring kit that has the five primary colors and we color five eggs. So we'll take the eggs, we will boil them in advance and then we will let them cool. And then we let Carl actively engage in coloring her five eggs. After she has put the eggs in the coloring solution, we will take her outside to Easter egg hunt. We set up a solo Easter egg hunt for her, so we will take 20 plastic eggs that we have stuffed with $1 bills, and we will put them in our backyard. They're in plain sight. They're in close proximity to one another. We might cluster two or three of them together, and they are easy for her to collect and put into her basket. So Carl has fine motor delay. She has gross motor delay. So she does have some motor deficits. And so hiding eggs, making them difficult for her to get to, does have a potential to increase her risk of falls, does have a potential to to increase frustration, does have the potential to cause the activity to linger on for more time than it needs to. And so we make it easy for her. We make everything readily accessible for her. She goes into the backyard. She collects her eggs. She has a great time. And then once she's done with that, we come back into the house and we let her remove her five eggs from the coloring solution and look at the colors. And so the things that we have done to make this comfortable for her is that we have set up this activity for her alone. We have made it easily accessible to her and we ensure that it happens in a time frame that is in alignment with her attention span. The other thing we have to consider is that they do activities at school. So she does have an Easter egg hunt at school every year. So what I did was I sent a message to the teacher just letting her know that if Carl does not want to participate in the Easter egg egg hunt, it is perfectly okay for her to opt out, not to force anything. And I also asked her if she would put eggs to the side for Carl, just in case she opts out of participating, and if she would please fill up Carl's basket. And she assured me that she would. And so what I did there was I communicated with the teacher in advance, and we made an accommodation for Carl to receive just as many eggs as the other children because Carl loves eggs and she does love to Easter egg hunt but at school there will be a lot of children they will be excited it might be loud they'll likely be running around excitedly dashing for the eggs sometimes over one another and so Carl's personality is that in a situation like that when there is a lot of sensory input and a lot of stimuli she might opt to just step back and observe Observe, and that is perfectly okay because we already have an accommodation for her to Easter egg hunt in a comfortable environment at home. So I hope you found these things helpful. If they apply to your child, feel free to try them out and let us know what you think. Have a nice day.